Time for another try at cooking in these tiny cast iron pans. This time I think we're going to try and make tart tatin. So I'm going to try to make tart tatin, which is a kind of upside down baked caramelised apple tart. But I've got a feeling it's going to be tricky in these little pans because when I was doing the cooked breakfast, things cooked really fast in here. There's not a lot of mass in there and there's not a lot of depth to these pans. So even with these on the lowest setting on the hob, they tend to cook really fast and hot. And I think that could be tricky. Anyway, let's crack on. So we're going to have 250 grams of flour thereabouts and then into that flour weighing as I go we're going to have maybe 150 grams of butter you can do this with equal weight of butter to flour and you'll get a very very buttery golden pastry but I think 150 grams will still make it nice and golden without being completely overindulgent so about 150 grams of cold salted butter broken into small pieces and I'll just toss that in the flour to keep the chunks of butter separate from one another. Now cold water and I'm just going to add enough cold water here to bring this together into a crumbly dough. It won't take much so it's just going to be like about four or five tablespoons full of water just to try to gather up the flour. Okay I think we're there so you can see that it's not really a coherent dough yet, but it will be quite soon. And a little bit of flour on the hands. Just going to bring that together. I mustn't knead this because I don't want to break up all of those chunks of butter. So just going to squeeze it together and we're almost there and what we're making here is rough puff pastry if we wanted to make proper flaky puff pastry we would be laminating a big sheet of butter much like you do with croissants but this is rough puff which is a little bit easier to make so rolled out on both ends into the middle and then turn and then we'll roll out this way okay and again, both ends into the middle, kind of folding into thirds. And you can see this is not sticking together very well, but that's the whole point. And then we turn again. A little bit more flour. We really don't want to get stuck here. And you can see now these those pieces of butter are being smeared out into kind of streaks in the pastry. That's what's going to give it the flaky texture, hopefully. So again, into thirds. So this is that's the third folding. Now, different people have different opinions on how many times to fold this. So I just generally go by eye until I can't see any big protruding chunks of butter like that. So this is the fourth folding. And it's starting to feel a little bit tough now. The flour, the gluten in the flour is starting to work. And so this is actually a little bit tougher to roll out. So if that happens, I'm just going to wait a little while, let it relax and start again. But it's, you can see it's pulling back a little bit now. When I roll it out, it's pulling back into shape. So that's an indication that the gluten's starting to work, which is kind of a double-edged sword on this pastry actually, because you do want the gluten to work to create the layers, but you don't want a tough pastry. Okay, so that was the, so this is the fifth folding. I've lost count. Um, as I say, I don't tend to keep count. What I tend to do is just roll until I think it looks right. And there's still big chunks of fat there. So we've got to fold at least one more time. So this, I think, if I'm right on the count, it's the sixth folding. And I'm still seeing chunks of fat in there so we will keep going yeah we are getting there now okay yep yeah, I think this is going to be the last fold so I think we'll stop there 
So I can see that there's big smeared layers of butter in there now. I can't really see any big chunks. So I think that was seven folds, which I think might be the number that people normally say. So there we go, rough puff pastry. I'm gonna put that, I'm gonna cover that, put it in the fridge just to let it relax for a bit. So these two little skillets are gonna go onto the back burners of my cooker and then we'll get some sugar in there. Not really sure how much is appropriate for these little pans, so I'm gonna kind of make it up as I go along. So I think we're gonna go for about one and a half, no, less than one and a half, about one and a quarter tablespoons in each pan. Now at the moment, the handles of the pan are still touchable. That was the other problem I found with these pans is this handle, I know the handle of a skillet normally gets hot, but this not only gets hot, it gets difficult to get hold of because of the small size. When you put a cloth around your hand, you're getting very close to the flame with the thing that will burn. Right, so that sugar's starting to melt on that side. I'm gonna turn that down and do it slowly. Yeah, sugar's starting to melt over here also. And again, on this side, we've almost got caramel happening already. That goes pretty quickly. We're burning over here. That's kind of normal. Supposedly tart tatin is one of these things that was invented by accident. Right, that caramel is actually getting quite close to where I want it. Really important not to lick the spoon. That's hotter than boiling water. Okay, I'm gonna turn that off now because that's actually smoking. That's where we need to be. Just allow it to cool a little bit and then in with a chunk of butter, which is gonna sizzle a tablespoon, it's probably about an equal volume of butter to the sugar. Already we're at the point where I wish I had a bit more depth in these pans, but we are where we are. Right, gonna let those cool down a little bit while I prepare the fruit. Now the normal kind of traditional authentic tart tatin is normally made with apples, but I've got pears today because they're fun size. And so I'm just gonna go in and quarter these pears and then I just cut in there like that to take the little bit of core out. There's not much core in pears, but cut them into quarters and then like that. I'm not gonna peel these because the skins are quite delicate and also by the time I peeled these, there'd be nothing left. And I'm gonna cut those quarters into eighths. All right, just put those bits in the compost. And now my two little pans of caramel, I'm just going to arrange the pears. Now normally this would go back onto the cooker and we'd cook it until the apples, or in this case pears, are a bit cooked and caramelized and cooked down. But I don't think that's gonna to need to happen here because everything cooks so fast in these little pans. So I think it's just gonna be pastry on and straight in the oven. Also, chef's privilege. So pastry's had a chance to rest now. I'm gonna cut two pieces of this. We'll go for about that much. So it's about maybe one third of that batch of pastry. The rest I'll use for something else. Okay, and then I'm gonna just round off the corners on this pastry. Because the trouble with puff pastry is if you cut a circle, there's really not any way to use the trimmings. And I don't like waste, so we're gonna try and circle a square here. So we'll try and roll a square piece of pastry out into more or less a circle. And that needs to be just a little bit bigger than the pan. So let's just offer that up. Yeah, a little bit more than that. Then my two pans, which are now cool enough to handle, tuck that pastry down the sides, lift and tuck like that. I think I've got a little bit big on the pastry, but we'll see how we get on. Definitely a bit big on the pastry. So what I'm gonna do is I'll tuck this one in like this. So that's one of them. This one, I will just unroll it a bit opposite of rolling pastry and see if it works. 
quite liking this texture here actually that could be an interesting feature okay and then same deal here we kind of tuck the pastry down the side of the pan now obviously if you're making the full size version of this you don't get a chance to put your fingers all over it because you're working with something that's scalding hot so I don't know we'll see if this works so that's that one so now those are going to go straight in the oven and bake until golden and crisp there's a very very strong possibility that caramel will overflow so I'm going to put these on the wire rack of the oven shelf I'll put a tray underneath to catch any drips okay well there they are I think they're done. There might be this kind of Fray Bentos effect where perhaps the underside of the pastry is not fully cooked, but we'll see. And that was about 35 minutes in a Gasmark 7 oven, which is this temperature on the screen. I'm just gonna let those cool a little bit before I try to turn them out. If I try to turn them out too soon, the caramel will just be too runny. If I leave it too long, they'll get set in the pan and we'll never get them out. Right, well, here's the theory just run a knife around the edge there to make sure that that pastry is completely loose then I think about how we're going to do this yeah <laughs> some rearrangement required of the pairs but not bad let's see if this second one fares any better okay pastry is loose ready to flip and over we go yeah again a little bit of uh, post baking adjustment is necessary but that I would say is not a bad looking tart tata what do you think let me know in the comments okay teeny tiny tart tata so normally you'd have creme fraiche or ice cream with this. I'm just going to have a little bit of Greek yogurt on mine. Okay, well, pastry is nice and crisp all the way through. That's good. That's what, something I was worried about. It could be hot, by the way, so just be a little bit careful. It, it should have cooled down enough now. Right, here we go. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah. It's really nice. Mm. Now I think the caramel is a little bit too far gone on this. I think the caramel there's a little bit of bitterness from the caramel because I think it cooked too fast in the pan. Yeah, probably. But I think that's just the trouble with these little pans. They cook everything cooks so quickly that it's really difficult to keep it under control. But the apples are nice and tender. Pears. Pears. <laughs> um, pears. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, mean, I think the sweetness of the pears actually, is it just saves it from being too bitter from the caramel, doesn't it? Mm. But yeah, that pastry is a success. I think I would be more comfortable just making the full-size version because it was just so intense a process trying to manage that tiny pan. But anyway, I'm calling that a success. What do you reckon, Jenny? Yeah, I think it's all right. Yeah, yeah good, good. Okay, well, there we go. Teeny tiny tart tatin cooked in my tiny metal skillets that I got with those cookie mix kits. I hope that's been interesting. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.